Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So Israel has some of the most amazing venomous snakes, from cobras to vipers to everything in between. Well, I'm here in the southern Israel desert right now, and obviously it's nighttime when all the vipers come out. So I'm here with all my Israeli herper friends, and we're gonna go out, and we're gonna see just how many vipers we can find here in Israel. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. And I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. Rattlers, so this is one of the most incredible moments of my life. This right here is a black desert cobra. When we saw the monitor lizards when we were going down the wells, I made a comment about how the two top species that I wanted to find out here were not only those desert monitors, but these guys, the black desert cobra. This was number two on my wish list to find here in Israel. And here she is. She is a big, beautiful black female. And this species of cobra, they don't hood up like other cobras do, like the monocled cobras that we saw in Thailand. These just make a bunch of noise and huff and puff, kind of like a bull snake, sort of. But they rely on intimidation to scare off potential predators. And you can hear the sounds that she's making. That's basically all they do. They don't hood up to intimidate. They don't try to make their heads look any bigger than they are by hooding up like other cobras again. But these cobras make a really good living for themselves out here in the desert because of the variety of food that they can eat. They can eat birds and they eat lizards and they can eat rodents. These snakes have actually been documented eating carrion, eating roadkill on occasion when other food sources might not be readily available. But they have been observed in the wild eating carrion, eating dead roadkill. Because of the wide variety of foods that this snake eats, it is a very successful snake out here in the deserts. Ugh. Rattlers, this is one of the, again, greatest moments of my life, finding this snake here in the Israeli desert. Whew. Black desert cobra. All right, so the rest of the guys just called out. They have a Sarasti Sarastis over there. I'm gonna go check it out and leave her alone. So this little viper right here is Serastes Serastes. This is the desert horned viper. And it's got these two little horns above its eyes. And there's two schools of thought as to why a snake would have those ocular, or those super ocular scales, the scales on the top of the eye. And there's two schools of thought as to why this snake would have evolved horns like that. One thought is that when it's in a bush like this, those horns help break up the head shape amongst all the jagged thorns and twigs. The other idea is that it helps keep sand out of the snake's eyes. I'm going with the first one because I don't really see how having horns on the top of your head can keep sand out of your eyes. But this is a very successful viper out here as well. And its primary diet is lizards. But this snake also has regional coloration. So the ones found here in Israel they're more blue than even the ones found just over the border into Egypt, which is about four miles away from me right now. And those snakes are really kind of tan and brown and drab, whereas the snakes in Israel are more blue and gray. 
I have no idea why that exists, and it has nothing to do with diet, and it has nothing to do with environment. It's the same diet and the same environment that these here in Israel have in common with the ones in Egypt. But this is, again, my favorite viper found here in the deserts of Israel. Oh, this is turning out to be just an absolutely amazing night. And if we find a saw-scaled viper, I'm gonna sh- Uh, there's a grenade. I'm just gonna move over uh, this way. <laughs> oh boy. What did you get, a little Palestinian viper? Oh, a little baby, look at this. Look at this, that little dude. So this little guy is in the genus Deboya, which are the same genus as Russell's vipers. I don't think you're gonna find much cover under that because I'm about to move it, buddy. <laughs> this little Palestinian viper constitutes more snake bites than any other snake here in Israel simply because they live so close to human habitation. And every hospital in Israel has the anti-venom on stock just because bites from these vipers are really so common. All right, we've got the other species of viper that's found in Israel here. Where is he? He's probably buried in the sand. All right, so this little eye sticking out of the sand is a Cerastes vipera. It is the smallest viper in Israel. So I blew some of the sand off of him so that you guys could see what he looks like. And this is just an incredible little snake. It's the smallest viper here in Israel. And we are learning more and more about its natural history all the time. In fact, Itai just wrote his doctoral thesis on this snake. And what he discovered was is that although this snake is nocturnal, its primary food source, geckos, are diurnal. So the snake isn't hunting at night, but what it's doing is it's hunting for the perfect ambush spot. And it'll bury itself in the sand and just wait until morning when the geckos become active. And then bam, it gets its meal. It sits in the warm desert sand and begins digesting that meal. And then at nighttime, it goes out again and tries to find that perfect ambush spot. All right, so we've found everything that we've come to find in this part of the desert. So now we're gonna drive for two and a half hours all the way to the other side of Israel to the Jordanian border to go herping in this canyon area. Find kitty, huh? What'd you find, kitty? Go find the snakes. Go find the saw scales. What'd you find, kitty? What'd you find? Look at this. This cat has been following us this entire canyon, and is totally helping us herp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not helping us herp. And there he is, guys. This is Equis Coloratus. This is the only saw-scaled viper in Israel. And we found one right there. So the reason they're called saw-scaled vipers is some snakes have a defense mechanism. Like for instance, a rattlesnake, they evolved a rattle on their tail. And when they're nervous and they vibrate their tail like most snakes do, well, of course you hear the buzzing of the rattle. Well, these guys have really thick scales on their side. And what they do is they rub their scales together and it makes this sound that wards off potential predators. He's not doing it right now. All he wants to do is get away, and I would really love for him to do it so I could show you guys, but oh, there he is, the saw-scaled viper. This has been one of the most incredible trips that I have ever had here. Between all the vipers that we have found, every single one of them that was on my wish list, we found, and now a saw-scaled viper so absolutely amazing. So right now, I'm gonna get my shots of him and it's about four o'clock in the morning right now and I have been up for about 22 hours. So I'm gonna go get a couple of hours of sleep on a sand dune before that sun wakes me up. So guys, if you wanna see more about my Israeli adventures, hit that subscribe button and when you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload. Hit that like button, hit that share button, share this video so everyone can see it. And until the next adventure from here in Israel, love the planet, feed your reptile, session and rattle on. <laughs>